Alright, so this is insane, and it seems like the critical race theory nonsense has infected elementary schools as well, as I'm sure it has been for quite some time. But this is the wonderful part of going online and having Zoom classes. The craziness gets displayed out there for more people to see. I can only hope that parents see this and either demand the teachers stop teaching garbage like this to kids, or perhaps they get fired, or better yet, pull your kids out, homeschool them, move them to private school, do whatever you gotta do to get your kids out of that classroom with these unhinged so-called teachers. Because this is crazy. This is from an elementary school class, and it's teaching kids about where racism and white supremacy culture shows up. Because, of course, this is so tortured and convoluted, and it has to be fabricated to be believed. So what are some of the things being taught to these kids? Perfectionism is a characteristic of white supremacy culture because trying to better yourself or improve yourself or perfect some task that's a bad thing or that only or that it only pertains to white culture. The accusation itself is racist as it seems they're saying that white people are the only ones that want to perfect things that isn't true and pretty degrading to other races quite frankly. A sense of urgency Again, that is a characteristic of any place or people that values people's time and wants to be on time or punctual. That just makes no sense whatsoever. And defensiveness there? Um, okay, this is the classic white fragility claim where you can be accused of horrible things like your inherent racism that you can do nothing about and any sort of rebuttal or claim that what they're saying does not apply to you. This just reinforces their claim that there's something wrong with you because your defensiveness proves that they're right. So the more you try and defend yourself, the more they get to sit in their self-righteousness and claim that you're only proving their point. It's a classic unfalsifiable position. And if this person teaching this class knew anything about debate, argumentation, or how to form a good argument, they would know that this type of logic is dead in the water. Unfalsifiable positions are nothing. They're easy to make and they're impossible to get over. And that ironically speaks to the argument's weakness, not its strength. See, I mean, look, for example, anyone who subscribes to critical race theory is evil and wants to rule the world. And if they deny it, it's only because they don't want us to know their plan. It's that easy. Now, no matter what they say, I can always fall back on this unfalsifiable position and sleep easy knowing I won the argument, even though I didn't win a thing, nor do they win anything here. Or how about paternalism? Now, patriarchy, paternalism, say what you want about it, but to suggest that this is unique to white culture in any way is insane. I'll put it this way. However many civilizations have existed throughout history, the number of matriarchal societies can be listed on an index card. So this is pervasive throughout innumerable cultures that span all of human history. If you want to say paternalism is a bad thing, I would disagree, but that's kind of besides the point. The point is that this is in no way unique to anything having to do with white culture or being white or let alone white supremacy. Um, or how about power hoarding here? Same thing. Um, since when is the hoarding or thirst for power unique to white culture? Across Asia, Africa, South America, you name it, there have been power-mad people who go on an unending quest to acquire more power and influence. You might say it's an aspect or a characteristic of being a human being, and uh, generally human beings who get into politics, not for nothing. Um, so cut me a break with this being something unique to whiteness. It's absurd. And same goes for the fear of open conflict. People generally don't like open conflict if given the choice between that and peace. So it just makes no sense whatsoever. Now, individualism, here's the real kicker. All they're trying to teach these kids is that individualism is to be opposed because if you can degrade individualism, that means you get to blame and accuse individuals for things they are completely innocent of. But you can do this simply based off whatever group they belong to, in this case, their race. It's actually what real white supremacists or other racists actually do. They don't want to support individualism. They want to be able to generalize a person based off of superficial nonsense instead of who they are, what values they have, how they live their life, what their ethics are, what they believe, how they behave, etc., etc., etc. It's just funny seeing these critical race theorists take a page directly out of the racist and white supremacist handbook. Make sure you don't judge someone as an individual. Make sure you judge them by some cosmetic group they belong to. That way you can paint them with the broadest brush possible. 
Well, that's exactly what these critical race theorists, theorists are doing here. Objectivity is on here, of course, um, and that's ridiculous. Of course you want to condemn objectivity if you're, if you're one of these people. You don't want some calm, rational, logical perspective on reality. That would not suit their interests. It has to be an insane level of hysteria lacking in all perspective. It has to be this purely subjective lived experience that we base our beliefs off of. And then we extrapolate from that and cast it all over society, all race relations, and any interaction between two people of two different races. Objectivity kills that, because most people can see objectively that racism is not some monster lurking around every single corner and within every interaction. So, of course, they want to criticize objectivity. So, because of this insanity, I'm hoping that these Zoom classes continue. I mean, yeah, keep schools online. This is what teachers expressed fear over, if you remember, a few months ago. They were frightened of parents actually hearing what they teach their kids. And this might be a perfect example. Any parent with a half-functioning mind that sees this type of stuff, that awareness only puts a fire under rational people's feet to get their kids out of there. And that is not a bad thing. But anyway, that's all for right now. Like and subscribe, and uh, take it easy.